how to use data tables in Cucumber, right? JS code to well uh, grab the hashes and iterate over all the rows that we have in a data table. And at the end, we generated an amazing report like this one with all the features, scenarios that were that was passing or not, and also a, a features overview with every single scenario. Uh, well printed in green in this case because everything is working fine hey masters welcome back to junk media it is a pleasure to have you here again and we're gonna continue working on the cucumber cypress small framework right where in the last video we defined this feature file with all its gherkin structure right if you remember correctly we uh, well created two different scenarios a success login with uh, a correct username and an incorrect password i'm sorry a correct password also we have the locked out user scenario where we have a, a locked out user right and as soon as uh, well we enter the the different credentials and we click on the login button well the user is going to be receiving a locked out message in this video we're going to be reviewing how to add uh, for example an scenario where we have a correct username but an incorrect password and we are gonna be uh, well sending the data in in data tables right i'm gonna try to explain you how you can use data tables in cucumber and also well we're gonna try to generate an automatic report after every single execution okay so let's go ahead and, and try to uh, make an improvement here right because there is a, a gherkin uh, property that we can use which is the background one and if you check this it, it, it is saying that occasionally you will find yourself repeating the same given steps in all of the scenarios in a feature so since it is repeated in every single scenario this is an indication that those steps are not essential to describe the scenarios and they are uh, in in let's see they are incidental details you can literally move such given steps to the background by grouping them under a background section so yeah as you can see we have a given scenario that is actually repeated in two different scenarios so we can declare a, a background property here right i don't need a name in case you want to name it you can do it but well you can translate or actually a uh, copy or i don't know move your given step at the beginning of your feature right before every single scenario because it, it is going to be a um, well kind of, it is going to be a kind of hook right so now the given scenario is going to be a uh, well executed at the beginning of every single one okay so if i uh, save this and i come here to my uh, cypress test runner i execute this again you will see that probably every single uh, scenario is going to be visiting right the given uh, well the given structure right a, a user enters to the login page and the another one is also going to have the giving at the beginning because we're using background that's some tip that i wanted to show you uh, in case you you already know it but well it, it is it is fine right but in case you you didn't know it it is pretty pretty fine and something to to be aware of right so now i wanted to improve this um well this step right because uh, well uh, we are gonna be uh, adding more uh, incorrect scenarios right so for example when we have a um a login scenario with a correct user but an incorrect password we're now we're, we're gonna be receiving this new um well test error right or uh, uh kind of error message saying username and password do not match any user in this service and the same stuff happen when you enter a, a correct username but at uh, an incorrect password you're gonna have the same message right so i, I wanted to improve this then a uh, step definition to receive the, the different um, kind of error messages that we have right but we can use it in in our in our step definition so let's go ahead and take a look what i did in the last video uh, i had this uh, a user will receive a locked out message right and i want to bring this message over here right to the scenario itself so a user will receive and we're gonna be sending the string over here. Epic sad face. Sorry, this username has been has been locked out, and the message word at the end. So now we can replace this in our then step definition, right? 
and instead of having this over here i'm gonna be having an a string right if you remember correctly from the last video i wanted to do that but also this step definition has to be a, a in inside of a quote right so it is gonna be a, a string we're gonna be receiving the message from the uh, as a parameter so it is going to be a um, well error message no matter what error message it is okay and now well instead of well uh, testing the 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 kind of hard-coded error message now we're gonna be playing around with the error message that we are receiving from the gherkin okay now if i save this again i hope that if i run this again it is gonna be working fine it is working as expected now let's imagine that i want to add another a scenario right and it is going to be a um well an incorrect username okay so the error message is going to change incorrect user right if you remember if this is the one because we're not sending the correct username so i'm gonna copy the error message and in the gherkin part in the then step definition i'm gonna be sending the new error message so now it is that is dynamic right and well instead of sending the parameters over here with this when and then i want to do something different i'm going to change uh, this uh, gherkin structure to an a single when and this when is going to be a user provides right incorrect credentials okay you're going to see why credentials creden yeah there it is and now we are gonna be doing something here which is called data tables if i am not wrong and here you can send different parameters uh, while well, just specifying the value that you need at the at the beginning of your tables you can specify headers so for example i want to specify username and passwords which are the parameters that i want to receive and here, uh, well, in the next row, uh, you can specify the username that you want to send. So, for example, I can send a test user, which is a, an incorrect username, right? But the password is, is going to be the correct one, which is secret sauce, okay? We're going to be sending these values over here. And um, now that I have uh, this ready, I think that we can continue with the next step, which is going to be, um, well a user clicks on the login button yeah we can we can keep that we're gonna come here to the login uh, .js, which is the step definition file right and we're gonna be doing the the next uh, the next code over here i'm gonna create a new one okay and this new one well it's gonna have the same structure we're gonna have a, a well the step definition here right it is going to be a user provides incorrect credentials that's fine and instead of receiving a single uh, parameter, we're, well, actually, we're going to receive a single parameter, which is going to be the table or the data table, right? And, well, it is going to be an error function. Mm -hmm. And here we're going to use a, a, well, a function here. Again, table that hash, hashes, I'm sorry, right? And with uh, we're going to do a function here, and then we're going to do a for each, okay? And... I'm sorry why for each there it is but I don't I don't want to do that yeah there it is now we can well uh, inspect every single row inside of the table hashes okay over here so I'm gonna come here I'm gonna do something like this and I'm gonna be locking what I have in my table so we can see what is happening inside of the of the curriculum part I'm gonna do a row that um, then the, the the header name which was username okay username and also we're gonna be logging the row that password and if i am not drunk let's see if, if it is co working correctly or not i am missing something here uh, user provides incorrect credentials and we are having a problem with the step implementation missing um oh i see probably I, I i did something wrong there let's see okay and there it is now you you can see that we are logging the test user and the and the test password right that we are uh, sending as a data table over here it is important that you can send more 
parameters for example uh, test user 2 i don't know right and uh, pass incorrect password and well that function is gonna be iterating over every single row that we have available in our in our gherkin right so as you can see probably you're gonna see that we are sending or actually printing in the lock uh, in the test runner lock that we have one username over here and then one password and then another username and another password it can be useful right and you can well use this demo to expand it to to your different scenarios in real life projects okay but in this case i'm gonna leave uh, my my scenario as you can see over here and well if i execute this you probably you must well it, it is gonna fail because i'm not sending the the actions to the in the in the step definition so instead of locking the information here i think that we can do something different right the, the first step is gonna be a uh, well type the username that we are gonna be well uh, receiving from the table so we can do something like a uh, row username and then we have to type the password right so there it is now i have to send row that password and if i execute this again you probably are going to see that well my scenario is working we are typing the test user that we are receiving from the gherkin part over here and also we have the password that we got also from the data table over here and that's amazing i guess and well it is basically all the stuff that we we needed to solder we can add another scenario over here let me see why i had a focus there <laughs> not sure why hmm. there it is and um well we can add another scenario just well changing the 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 parameter in the data table instead of uh, the, the in, instead of the scenario of incorrect user i think that now we need incorrect password right and if I do, um, well, if I send the correct username, which is a, a standard user, right? Over here, sorry. But an incorrect password, you're going to see that it is going to fail. Test, there it is. And well, uh, let's see if it is working or not. Incorrect user uh, a scenario is working as expected. And also, uh, well, my incorrect password is also uh, working as expected because we are sending an incorrect password. That's fine. That's something that I wanted to show you, right? It's pretty simple. We have improved uh, improved a bit our feature file with the background step. We also now have implemented the data tables. And well, as as in as I, as I told you in the last video, I highly recommend you to come here and check. Uh, all the different uh, properties that we have here right the rule we have the uh, scenario outline uh, examples we have different secondary keywords here like uh, doc strings data tables that we have so we have talks uh, tax and comments and, and more stuff right so please come here and check the cucumber.io official documentation in the gherkin part because we have a uh, well uh, a lot of documentation here very useful so um well, I think that that's basically the the, the, um, the data table part. Now let's integrate the Cucumber um, HTML reporter to have, well, kind of beautiful HTML reports at the end of your execution, right? So I'm going to close all the tabs that I have here because it is all done. Mm, close all. And, well, I'm, I'm going to close the Cypress part and I'm going to come here to the package.json. And, well, we have uh, some steps that we have to accomplish here. And uh, let me check my notes because it is a kind of process that we have to follow, right? <laughs> and I don't want to do something wrong. Let me check that. Yeah. I don't know what happened here. Let me see. There it is. Now, I'm going to come here to the package.json. And if you remember correctly from the last video, we included this um well cypress cucumber preprocessor configuration right because it was essential to have the the well the gherkin working and actually cucumber working in cypress right but now we are going to be adding another configuration here which is going to be the cucumber uh, json okay this cucumber json is going to be having an object and this is going to have four different values the first one is going to be generate okay and this generate is going to be 
uh, well, it's going to have the value, the Boolean value of true. Okay. The next parameter that we have to add is going to be output folder. Okay. Output um, folder. And here we have to specify where are going to be having or where are going to be generating the, the JSON reporter of Cucumber in our framework. In this case, I want to have it in the Cypress uh, folder and then, well, a cucumber, have a Cucumber a JSON folder. Okay. Then, uh, well, the, the next step is going to be uh, adding a new uh, key over here, which is going to be file prefix. Okay. Or prefix. I'm not sure how it is pronounced in English. I'm sorry file prefix and well here we don't have to specify anything because we don't have any kind of prefix at, at the beginning of our feature files but it is important to mention that we have a file suffix okay which is a uh, that cucumber it is important and we can review it because we have here uh, um, let me see. Oh, all right. We, we're going to see that as soon as uh, the, the Cucumber JSON is generated. Okay. That's good. Um, all right. I'm going to save this. And if I close my test runner and I run it again, probably, let's see. I'm going to clear my, my console. And I'm going to be doing something like npm run test, which is the, the script that will execute the test runner, right? The Cypress open command. Well, I'm going to execute my login feature, right? That's fine. And as soon as it is done and finished with, with test results, correct or not, we're going to see that we're going to have a new folder here named Cucumber JSON. And inside of this folder, we have a new file named login.cucumber.json. And as you can see, we have all the different... Um, well, actually, all the test results inside of this JSON. And as you can see, um, well, we have the feature name over here. Then we have the prefix, which is Cucumber. And then, well, the file itself is going to be a JSON file because we have defined the Cucumber JSON property of the Cypress Cucumber preprocessor. OK, that's important. And that's something that you needed to know. And then uh, I'm going to do the, the next step because, uh, well, we now have the JSON file. It is important to mention that every Every single feature that you have is going to be generating a different JSON over here under the Cucumber JSON folder. And well, the, the next step is going to be, um, I think we have to install a new library in our project. Okay. So let's take a look at the package that, that JSON. Let's see that we only have uh, the Cypress dependency and also the Cypress Cucumber preprocessor. But now I'm going to do something different, right? So I'm going to clear my, my, my terminal and I'm going to be running npm install a multiple, multiple Cucumber HTML reporter. Okay. We're going to be saving this as a dev dependency too. Okay. And well, let's see if we can, uh, we can access this, uh, access it as soon as it is ready. And as you can see, now we have a new dev dependency here named multiple cucumber HTML reporter. And well, the next step is going to be pretty simple, <laughs> but it is important. We're going to be creating a new JS file at the, at the, well, at the root of our project, which is a, uh, well, Cypress Cucumber in this case, and I'm going to be creating a new file here. It is going to be named, for example, something like Cucumber uh, HTML reports.js. Okay. This file is going to contain the, some parameters that we want to have in our reporter. Okay. So for example, the, the first thing that we have to do is something like const report. Uh, it is going to require, okay. The, the, well, the library that we have just downloaded, which is reports. No, it is multiple. I'm sorry, multiple. Um, Cucumber um, HTML reporter, right? Do you remember that we have installed that a few seconds ago? Reporter, right? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, yeah, reporter. There it is. And well, that's basically what I have to do. Then I need to let's see why it is not working. Require file is my convert to a six module. Couldn't find a declara declaration for module reporter. 
Hmm, let's see why. Um, require multiple cucumber. No, the, the, it, it is working. Yeah, don't 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 worry about this message. Then we're gonna be uh, doing something like report that generate. Okay, and here we're gonna have a kind of a uh, object. And we're going to be doing and actually sending some keys and values. The first one is going to be the JSON di directory where we have the JSON file. Okay. So it is going to be inside of a Cypress um, Cucumber um, dash JSON. Okay. And if you remember, it was inside of Cucumber dash JSON. And here we have the JSON file. So that's basically what we had to do there then we're gonna send another key over here which is gonna be the report path okay the report path is gonna contain or we're gonna define where we want to generate our reporter okay so here i want to do something like in the in the root directory i want to create a, a folder named reports and inside of the reports folder we're gonna have a cucumber um html report okay that HTML that's it basically then we have to send some meta metadata if you want if you don't want it is fine but I want to do it so I'm gonna create a, a kind of new key here which is gonna be meta um, data okay that's fine and sorry and this is gonna be an object with uh, some properties okay I don't know why it didn't work okay I missed the, the comma there it is and now i, I want to also define the browser for example okay the browser is going to be chrome okay uh, i also want to define the the name of um okay it was the name i'm sorry let's see uh oh i see it it, it is because we have to also create a, an object from the browser i'm sorry mm -hmm. and he, here we can define the the browser name browser uh, it, it is name right there it is then we have to name the 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 browser itself which is chrome uh, if you want to add the version you can do it i'm not sure what version i have in my computer but i think it is the the 19 well uh, 96 if i'm not wrong i need to add a comma here because it if i don't do it it's gonna it is not gonna work um, and that's basically it i guess we can add um, uh, a device here right if you want let's imagine that i want to say that this report is going to have the metadata of a device as local test machine okay that's fine and well let's imagine what else we can uh, add we can add the platform also if we want so for example if i come here if i come here at the bottom of my metadata and at and i add the platform platform key okay a uh, platform there it is we can add a uh, more properties inside of the platform let's imagine that it is the platform name uh well windows in this case right and i need to add a comma and we'll add the version for example okay and this version is going to be a Windows 10 in this case. But if it is Windows 11, you can do it too. <laughs> okay. Let's imagine what that it is 10. And that's basically it. If I am not wrong, it should be working as well with this js file let's try to generate our reporter it is gonna be a uh, well the way that we generate uh, an html report using this js file from the json it is simply a uh, well since we have our script uh, kind of pointing to the cucumber json folder it is gonna be generating a single uh, or actually well wrapping all the json files that we have for every single um, quite kind of feature right and well it is gonna be generating a, a custom report with all the features inside so we have to do a note command here and well add the J js file that we have here which is cucumber html reports that js and well as you can see now as as we define in this script um in the report path we have created a 
support, I'm sorry, no, a reports folder. And inside of this reports folder, we have the index.html with all its, um, well, we have another folder actually, right? With the, the, the final HTML. So if I come here to my, uh, let's see, to my repo, which is in repos, uh, Cypress Cucumber reports. And if I open up the index, you can see that right now I have a kind of general dashboard with all uh, the statistics important. We have uh, like one feature in this case, we have um, well, four scenarios. Every single one is working. That's why it is in green, right? And also we have a features overview, right? That's that's something nice. We have the metadata that I specified, right? We have the the Chrome, uh, the, the browser version, the OS. We have the device that we uh, that we executed. We also have the status. And if I click here, you can see that now we have all the scenarios, all the gherkin structure here right in in plain english so everyone can understand what is happening there and well uh, we have a, a final report also you can see that here we have the data table right and and that's basically what we can achieve with this reporter it is amazing from my point of view and well i hope that you enjoy guys because um i'm not sure if you want to uh, Take a look of something else please let me know that in the comment sections please give me suggestions but i think that it was a, an amazing um well kind of video to explain you more stuff about cypress and cucumber so just to end uh the the video let's review what we did right um well basically we uh, improved right let me see in the i'm sorry in the in the feature file which is under integration right there it is well basically what we did um, was a uh, reviewing uh, why it is important to use background right and also we also be, we reviewed how to use data tables in cucumber right and also we saw the the the, the js code to well uh, grab the hashes and iterate over all the rows that we have in a data table and at the end we generated an amazing report like this one with all the features scenarios that were that was passing or not and also a, a features overview with every single scenario uh, well printed in green in this case because everything is working fine but uh, well that's basically what we saw thank you very much for watch and uh, this video until the end Thank you very much for all the support. Please subscribe, play a like, and see you in the next video. This was Young Media. Until the next one. Bye-bye.